All right, today's lesson I actually wrote while traveling to Iowa. We dropped off my son that's headed to law school and his wife, and it was a little bit of a sad moment, a little bit of crying there, but hopefully hopefully uh, this lesson makes sense over some of the tears. So anyways, today we are going to focus on the diagraph PS. Okay, now the P is silent in your diagraph PS, and when you have this diagraph, it shows that it's Greek. Now, PS typically will fall at the very beginning of a Greek combining form. So, or a Greek word. Okay, so now, like this word, Psalter. Or, so this word right here is Soralia. Now, this is its very own syllable, the L-E is a syllable, and look at that, that is the accent, that is YC one, two, three, that's where you find most of your accents in a four or more syllable word, and that's why that's saying A, Sykes, uh, psychoneurosis. Now, this is the same word as over here, psychoneurosis. Now, psych, so psych means to figure out or decipher. And some of you might have seen, actually seen the program psych, which that's what he's doing in there. He's figuring out, he's deciphering with his mind and his brain on the different things that, um, that he's doing. So now I'm going to not tell you what neuro means because neuro has a special meaning. It's a Greek combining form, so I challenge you to look that up so you can understand what psychoneurosis means. So when you are, so in the PS, in our writing, PS was adopted for words in the text. So long ago in the Greek language, they had signs and symbols, and when it turned into our language, we adopted the PS, okay? So it's coming from the high German language and that's how we actually got that letter or this digraph together. Now we have Psalms, which means a sacred song and that is a book in the Bible with lots of scriptures. Psilosis, pseudomorph, pseudomorph, pseudomorph. Now look, PS here, it's at the beginning of the word, so oh, that's that could be, that's probably Greek. Now look, um, now we have a PH, that tells you right off the bat that this is a Greek combining form. So this is a Greek word right here. Psychedelia, right here. But look at this word. This PS is in the middle of the word. So this is gypsus, and this is not a digraph. But it kind of looks like it could be, but it's not. So here's another word, hop sacking. But this PS is not a digraph. This is a compound word. But look at this, PS at the end of the word is typically, this is a suffix. S is at the end of words means it's a plural, whips, whips, okay? Stamps, see, blips, a uh, hiccups, troop ship. Now this um, PS right here, it's part of a different word. So just look at that. PS sh typically should go at the beginning of a word, okay? So now we went over TIs, SIs, and CIs in another uh, lesson. So I'm just going to review in this lesson because I feel it's so important to help you read and write and understand the sh sound. Now, we have TIs, SIs, and CIs that typically you find them, you find them in the middle of words. You don't find them at the beginning. You can't find them at the end because the only time a TI is a digraph is when it's followed by a vowel. So no way would this ever be at the end, okay? Now, how you would find this is if it's followed by a vowel. This says occupation. See, look at that, that is a vowel. So that is a digraph. But you also hear, if you see T-I-O-N, you know it's a unit sound 
and it says shun, okay? But look at this word. You have a T-I, it's followed by a vowel, and it says infectious, infectious, all right? So the T-I is a digraph in here. So look at this one. This one is a C-I, and it's followed by a vowel. Gracious. Now this has a base word. So if you can spell grace, and how you would spell s at the end of a word is almost always a C-E. If you spell it with an S-E, most of the time it will go to Z sound. And S's at the end of a word are plural. Okay, so most of the time there's, there's different, different reasons. But we have gracious. Grace is your base word. So you know if you have a base word, it ends in a C, your digraph is gonna be a CI when you're adding on. And you'll see lots of digraphs with TI and CI and SI with OUS, your suffix OUS added to it, okay? Okay, so now this word says imbecile. See how that's not going to be a digraph because that is a consonant. Can you see that? Okay, now look at this word. This word says pessimism. See how that is followed by a vowel, so it's not gonna say pessimism, or well, it would say pessimism. So, because that's a consonant. Okay, now this word, look at this. You have a T-I-O-N, so you know this is a unit sound. You know this is going to be a digraph if you see T-I-O-N. And see, look, it's, it's connected to a Latin root, invention. So this also helps you understand if you have a base word and you have invent, you know that it's gonna be a T-I-O-N because you have a base word. Uh, look, S-I, you know it's not a digraph because they don't go at the beginning of words. Sh does not, the SIs for the sh does not go at the beginning of the words. So this says sight. So IGH says I. Okay? Now, look at right here. T I O N, we know that that's a digraph. Transition. Now, T I O Ns and S I O Ns, they, and, and T I's and S I's, they typically go with Latin roots. Okay? So, derision see now look at this word now look at this word okay now look at this word now you have s-i-o-n right in here and you know right off the bat it's going to be a digraph because s-i-o-n is digraph this has an s-i-o-n so you know immediately that this is a unit okay and so this S-I-O-N, see look at that vowel. So that tells you that that is a digraph. But this I right here forces this to say zh. Okay, so S-I's can say zh or sh, depending on what's in front of it. If it's a vowel in front of it, you know it's gonna say zh. So derision. But look at this one, T-I and T-I, but look, a, vowel, a consonant, and that's a consonant. So T-I's can only be followed by vowels if to make them to be digraphs. So that's consonant, consonant, so you know that says statistics. But look, I just threw in that digraph for you guys. P-S says S. So that says psychics. The, S, the P is silent in there. So now look at this one. We have an S-I, but it's followed by a consonant so you know this is not going to be a digraph explosive. TI followed by a consonant, so it's not going to be a digraph, so this is act, actus, activist, okay? SI, you have a base word here. See, look, it's followed by a consonant, so this is not a digraph, so this is amusing. Look, look at this one. This is a T-I followed by a vowel. This says initiative. See, look, this T-I is followed by a consonant. This T-I is followed by a vowel. So this is a digraph and this is not. Initiative. Okay, C-I, but it's followed by a consonant. Decipher, T-I-O-N. You know right off the bat that is a digraph. Delegation. And when you see T-I-O-N or S-I-O-N, 
typically right here is the accent and syllable, okay? This says, so we have TI followed by a consonant. So continuity, TI followed by a consonant, prestige, TION, so you know that this is a digraph, revolution, that's your accent and syllable. Look, TI followed by a consonant, appetite, TI followed by a consonant, so it's not a digraph, creative. TI by a, by a consonant, diabetic, this is not a digraph. Oh look, TI followed by a vowel, this is a TION, this is a unit syllable, emotion, it's tied to your Latin root. T-I-O-N, look, it's tied to your Latin root, dict, prediction. Um, so aesthetic, look, T-I right here. It's not, it's followed by a consonant, so it's not a digraph. T-I followed by a consonant, it's not a digraph. Um, platinum. Uh, SI is at the beginning, you know it's not a diagraph, silicone. Uh, look, I threw in another one of these diagraphs. So this starts with a, so, pseudomorph. Okay, pseudomorph. Look, another right there. Tells you this is Greek. CI cannot be a diagraph, it's starting the, starting the word. Also look, it's a consonant, civilized. But look, this is in the middle of a word, but it's followed by a consonant. You know it's not a digraph, classified. But this CI is followed by a vowel, financial. But you have a base word here, so this is what's gonna help you with your spelling. Finance is your base word. Ends in a CE, and so you know that your digraph, when you switch it to financial, is gonna be a C-I-A-L, okay? So it'll help you when you have base words like that. This says so, uh, uh, so Sid. Look, C-I followed by a consonant. But look, T-I-O-N, we know that this is a digraph. Innovation. And now look at this. I already had this word up here, decipher. Now, I'm going to challenge you to go in and study your Greek combining forms so you can decipher words, you can break them apart in your mind. That's kind of what psych, what psych means. You can decipher word, decipher things with your mind. So, challenge you to do that. Now, let's go down right here. Can you see this real good, Dan? Down here. Okay, so we have T-I, just a reminder, they are digraphs but they have to follow vowels to do that, okay? And they typically go with Latin roots. So TIs, SICIs, and remember, in our last lesson, we, we talked about how CIs can also go with your profession, so your job that you're doing. All right, now, I wanted to shoot over, so Daniel just moved the, the but we'll wait for him. Okay, so, now the sh sound can be very confusing. When do you use SH? You use them in the beginning of words and at the end of words. Not always, but almost always. The TIs, the SIs, and the CIs typically go in the middle of a word. Um, so the TIs, SIs, and CIs go in the middle of words, but SHs go at the beginning, at the end. Once in a while you'll find them in the middle, but not very often. So, now look at this. Ash, harsh, slash, crush, crash, blush, push fresh. Now look at this. This SH looks like it's going at the, um, in the middle of a word, but it's not because this is a compound word and you would spell push like you would typically spell it. So cash, brush, rush, slash, nish, so look, the case silent, frosh, fish, gash, wash, smash, 
mesh, flash, crush. I know I've done a, a few doubles, but I just want you guys to get the fill. This is important that you know the SHs go at the end of words. Dash, lash, bish, uh, slash, skosh. Now this one's an uh, unusual word. This doesn't go in our language. It looks like it should be a closed syllable, but it's not because it's not part of our language, okay? But look, it's still following the spelling rule. SH is at the end, right? Mash, SH at the end. But look what we have. SHs go at the beginning of words. Okay, so now we know SH goes at the beginning of words. Beginning and the end. So we have shed, uh, shoe, shad, shoal, shame, shrine, shrank, shell, shive, sh. Now, this is an unusual word. This is considered a word, but most words, this is an exception to the rule. Well, all words have to have a vowel, but this is an exception because it means shh like that. Okay, be quiet. Show, she, shrunk, shift, shop, shrink, shaw, a shay. Now remember, A's at the end. This isn't this isn't coming from our language. A's at the end. If if they're uh, not accented, it says schwa. But this is the accented syllable, and but it's not saying A here because American words say A, and how you spell it at the end is A Y, and this is unusual too. Uh, but E A says A. Okay. Um, so we have flashback. Look at this. This SH also looks like it could be in the middle of a word, but flash, is, this is a compound word. Flash is its own word. Brainwashing, look, wa this SH looks like it could be in the middle of a word, um, but it's, do you see that, Polly? See how this one looks like it could be in the middle of a word, but it's not, right? Because this has a suffix added to it, right? Same thing with this, looks like, looks like it could be in the middle of a word, but it's not because egg shell, this is a compound word. So it's really the beginning of the word shell. Gawkish, now this suffix right here, ish, like childish, you're acting like. Um, so this is following the spelling rule. I, um, SH goes at the end of words. Now we also went over in our last lesson the when do you spell with a TCH? I'm gonna just review this after a short vowel. Always. You can't spell TCH any other way. Okay? So short vowel, stitch, clutch, short vowel, snatch, short, cratch, short, snitch, short. Now look at this one. CKs can only be spelled after short vowels. You cannot spell a CK at the middle of, a, um, at the beginning of a word. Not allowed, they're only at the, in the middle and at the end and they have to follow short vowels. Same with TCH, okay? So, ticket, see how that is a short vowel. Rocket, short vowel. Now we went over when to spell CK in the middle of a word and that's in our last lesson if you wanted to review that. So look, heck. Short vowel, yuck, short, neck, short, flick, that's short, fleck, short, block, short. See how they're all short vowels, and these are closed syllables. They will be closed syllables. CK, click, short, cluck, short, but look at this CH. So you cannot do a TCH at the beginning of the word. If you want ch at the beginning of the word, it has to be a CH, okay? Slick, short vowel. Smack, short vowel. Check, short vowel. Stick, short vowel. Thick, short, stack, short. So now, I would recommend that you would use some of these as your spelling rule, uh, spelling words. So maybe take these down and I challenge you to uh, 
study it and learn it and follow the rule. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next one.